Hello everyone and welcome again to another Teacher Joseph podcast. Today's phrase is to let rip and that's when you express yourself without British politeness in a very aggressive, rude, straightforward way saying exactly what you think. Now, we don't know where this phrase comes from, uh, but let me give you a few examples. After holding back his frustrations for weeks, John finally let rip and told his boss exactly how he felt. When the referee made a controversial call, the coach let rip with members of the team and used bad language. During the argument at the team meeting, emotions ran high and both parties let rip with heartful insults. With the deadline coming up, the team leader let rip with a speech to try to get everyone to take action. Despite warnings from the teacher, the student let rip during the class and was asked to leave. So there we are, to let rip. This is very common. Whenever you see someone losing their temper, it's called letting rip. Now, British people are usually very polite. We don't like to cause any big argument. Some people do, but most of us don't. And I think after COVID, again, more and more of us are very shy to try to say anything. Many shops have signs up saying, please note that if you abuse our staff, you'll be asked to leave. Yeah, so I was at the supermarket yesterday, actually, and I saw a sign and it said, abuse against our staff or threats made will not be tolerated. So letting rip in the UK is when you suddenly just explode with emotion. Now, it can be used in a good way as well. Okay, for example... As soon as the music started, Sarah let rip on the dance floor, showing off her impressive dancing. But the feeling is kind of the same, that the person maybe is showing a lot of emotion. Um, the singer let rip with the national anthem, stirring up feelings of nationalism amongst the crowd. So it's not always bad, but it's always when someone shows too much emotion to let rip. Now, just to give you um, some kind of background to that, um, I see Mark Knopfler is in the news today. And he was the guy who, uh, I think he was in Dire Straits, wasn't he? Mark Knopfler. And he's letting rip in the media today, saying that his own songs actually bore him. You know, he doesn't like them. He finds them very boring. Uh, the star, who's just recorded a new album called The Band's 14-minute epic Telegraph Road, a torturous thing. He says when it comes on, uh, when he hears it in shops or cafes, he thinks, oh God, when is this going to end? Apparently, Mark Knopfler has said um, the track which he recorded with Dire Straits, uh, 
into the weeds. He also didn't like that. And the eight-minute lullaby, Why Worry, from the album Brothers in Arms, uh, he referred to that as Why Bother <laughs> when they were recording it. Uh, he says it didn't come out the way he wanted it because he chose the wrong musical key. Oh, very interesting, isn't it? I always think that uh, these musicians love their songs, but um, I think they don't always because when they sing one song hundreds of times, they begin to hate it. So... Mark Knopfler is in the news today saying how much he really doesn't like these songs that he recorded in the past. And uh, there's someone else in the news today. I, <laughs> I don't know why I'm thinking this is quite a, a funny story. Um, but basically, there's a woman here who thought that she was meeting Gary Barlow. Um, and then it turned out to be a Nigerian guy. I mean, you'd think that she would know the difference between Gary Barlow and someone from Nigeria. The report says, a woman said she was fooled by a man pretending to be Gary Barlow. He's the singer from Take That, in case you're wondering. Um, pizza restaurant worker Janet Smith, age 62, thought that she was messaging the Take That singer for a week after adding him as a friend on Facebook. The fake Gary Barlow from Take That bombarded her with compliments, telling her, I love you, but Janet grew suspicious. She said she eventually convinced the man to reveal his true identity. And it turned out to be a 24-year-old Nigerian man who asked her for cash. And there's a picture of a very unhappy-looking Janet here, and she's letting rip with this story. She says, he was texting me from 9 a.m. to 3 a.m., Elderly people are going to be adding these celebrities. They're going to be conning these old people. Yeah, but he wasn't a celebrity, was he? He was a 24-year-old Nigerian guy. Um, so hopefully people would know the difference. Yeah, very interesting, very interesting. So she's letting rip in the media today. So letting rip is when you really say how you feel about something, usually in a very strong way. And also in our media today, uh, it seems that people are letting rip in one of our local pubs. Um, it says here that apparently there's a ghost in... <laughs> in a pub in England somewhere. I'll read you the story. It says, A ghost has been caught on camera knocking over drinks in one of Britain's most haunted pubs. Yeah, um, as you can imagine, British people don't like that very much. So some of them are letting rip by telling this story. Um, cameras... Uh, um, featuring a ghost called Jack, a sailor murdered on nearby land more than a century ago, uh, has turned up. Apparently, um, this poltergeist is haunting the famous Jamaica Inn in Cornwall, with uh, this video showing a customer's drink being knocked over completely. The pub manager said um, that the customers were sitting at a table in the main bar, very close to where the ghost usually sits. <laughs> I don't know how they know that the ghost usually sits there, but anyway, 
Um, they, they're saying that the ghost apparently knocked over the drink. Yeah, well, <laughs> probably it's uh, the drunk guy that knocked over the drink, no? And uh, it says here that they'll be running a documentary uh, about it uh, on one of our TV channels. Um, and they go on to say, for all we know, these spirits are watching us every day. Um, and someone called Ed Francis and Mr. Paul Calmedo of the Weird Britain Paranormal Research Team have certified the hotel as a genuine haunted location. Ed said, the rich history and multitude of witnesses of paranormal activity at this site going back many decades is compelling. But for many believers, this new footage really will be the cherry on the cake. Yeah, when we talk about the cherry on the cake, it means the crowning moment, the thing which convinces everyone, uh, the last straw, the, the thing which happens, which we think, whoa, it's got to be true then. It's a cherry on the cake. It's the final, the final thing. Um, well, this ghost apparently knocked over someone's drink. And of course, in the UK, that's kind of a big deal. <laughs> You know, you can do what you want, but you don't knock over someone's drink. That's That would be considered uh, something uh, extremely rude and inappropriate, yes. So this ghost has been knocking over drinks, and they've declared the inn uh, to be haunted. Um, that's the verb we use when we talk about ghosts. Jamaica Inn, that was a famous book, wasn't it? Uh, or was it a TV show? But I've definitely heard of that before. It's all to do with smuggling and pirates, isn't it? Uh, Jamaica Inn, no doubt uh, something to do with the slave trade as well. Let me see. Oh, yes, here we are. Jamaica Inn is a novel by the English writer Daphne du Maurier first published in 1936, then it was made into a film called Jamaica Inn, directed by Alfred Hitchcock. Um, it's set in the year 1815, and it was inspired by Du Maurier's stay at the real Jamaica Inn. And the story is about... Mary Yellen, a woman who moves to stay at Jamaica Inn with her aunt and uncle after the death of her mother. She quickly finds out that the inn is not a nice place. Uh, she isn't trusted by the locals and her uncle is closely linked with a group of men who appear to be smugglers. Oh, sounds nice, doesn't it? I'm sure I read that. When I was younger, I'm, I'm sure I did. Um, let's see. Yeah, and she works there as a servant, I think. Oh, there's a TV show as well called Jamaica Inn. But no mention of the ghost, I think. That's a, that's a newer thing. Oh, very nice, very nice. So maybe that's a book that we can check out uh, and have a look at sometime. Um, it looks like it's one of these old classical books. Speaking of um, books, yeah, I think it was a few weeks ago. I wasn't happy because I, I, I got a phone call from uh, somebody who clearly had ordered food and when it was delivered it wasn't the correct order. Now, they called me, presumably, because it was a wrong number. Um, I mean, I have nothing to do with food or delivering it, but this woman, she called me, and, oh, she really let rip. 
she started off by saying, look, I ordered, um, I think it was chicken fries and number six from your menu. And what I've received uh, is a burger and fries. I need someone to come back and collect this order because uh, it's not right. And I want the correct order delivered as soon as you possibly can. Oh, she was really letting rip, you know. She didn't allow me the chance to to speak at all. Um, it was just one of those calls on my mobile. And I picked it up and this woman just started shouting. And at the end of the conversation, um, when she finally calmed down a little bit and allowed me to speak... I said, listen, you have dialed the wrong number here. But before I got the chance to even say all of that, she just put the phone down. She hung up. <laughs> but she was really letting rip, you know. And uh, I think about an hour later, I could see she was calling again. So she obviously had the wrong number. So the second time, I didn't answer it. And I just blocked the number, hoping that it forces her to go to the restaurant and sort it out with them, you know. So there we are. So that's letting rip. It's when you really let go of your emotions. Well, I hope you found this helpful. Let's talk again soon. See you. Bye.